everybody, Dave Monahan, Goods and Tools and Supplies, and time again for another Tech Lab Tuesday. Today, we're going to talk about counterboring and specifically adjustable counterboring tools. Now, we, we've all been... And in this particular case, I want to set a 1-500 counterboard. So I need to move my micrometer here, thusly. You can see, I don't know if you can see these numbers or not. Here's 1-350, and there's 1-500 coming up on the dial right there right now and you can see as i've got my indicator looking for maximum radius i'm sitting right at zero or one inch 500. the beauty of this counterbore cutter as you see we've got vertical hold down screws here and then we have a horizontal a set screw here what i like to do is, is loosen this one this one slightly put a little bit of tension on there and then i'll use this tool this allen wrench here to move that one set screw to bring the cutter to make contact with this indicator base and matching up with my micrometer setting i'm at one two fifty zero 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 on that dial indicator so i precisely set that of course when i'm done i will take this out lock this down give it another little tweak there and there and I've gone through a complete setup to ensure that I'm going to cut a perfect 1.500 dimension valve seat counterbore so I can put my new seat ring in. Now these things are driven in a variety of different ways. On the particular machine I'm going to use is our PH2000. It has a number three Morse taper drive. This has a, a wear sleeve that has a 375 Pilot uh, ID, and this is 9 16 or 562. Inside of this hole is a 562 hole. These dog ears, as I call them here, fit into that slot and actually do the driving or rotation from the quill of the machine, locating on your Pilot in the valve guide bore to precisely hold this as we machine that. Now, good machine is that we are. Measure the thickness of every valve seat you're going to cut. Don't just assume that what it says on the outside of a box is correct. Good machinists, we measure, or again, we're just guessing. So, there's also one other thing I wanted to point out to you. On the side here is a little ball detent. Can you see that? Right inside of there, it's got a little ball detent. That helps hold this cutter onto that end of the sleeve so it doesn't just fall off. That's adjustable. You can put tension or remove tension right there to help hold that counterbore cutter onto that drive tool. So let's go over here to the machine and let's see if my 1500 adjustment is going to actually cut a counterbore of 1500. Let me do a quick setup change and we'll get right to that. Hang on just a quick Okay, so I've got my seat and guide machine. Again, I, I've got to go through a leveling process. Good thing I've got my, my Goodson level right here. <laughs> As y'all see that, bang from my head right into it. I've already gone through it. I've preset this, so I'm level uh, left to right. I'm going to double check my level front to back. Yeah, I've got this all dialed in from before. Again, you got to calibrate your level. You level the machine to the level, and then everything going into the machine uses the same level, level, and then we're all synced up. As I mentioned, this is a number three Morse taper drive here. This goes into the quill, locks into position, stays right there. I've got a height situation here I've got to adjust for. So I'm going to move my head over, and I'm going to crank him up just ever so slightly, lock that back into position, grab my counterbore cutter, put him in position, grab one of my bounce springs, because you know me, I'm a bounce spring kind of guy, that's how I grew up, that's how I was taught. I'll use the air float table itself to go ahead and float in over here. And like I've said in the past, I like to leave it float a little bit, make sure I don't have any drag on the top of that pilot. So I'm gonna come on down and <laughs> Let's stop right there. As you see, I've set up on an intake here by mistake. Inch and a half cutter. Well, this seat's much larger than inch and a half. So let me do this. Let me get this out of the way. Let's get this pilot out of the bore. And I'll come over here to this uh, exhaust seat here, which is the one I wanted to, to cut. Stick that back inside. Quickly double check my level once again to make sure I am correct. 
Again, I've already got this set up. I found a valve guide uh, over here that has good integrity. I want to cut this inch and a half counterbore for that replacement seat. So I want to air float the seat and guide machine over on top of that pilot. And what I like to do when I find the top of that pilot, I go ahead and let the air float just a little bit. And then I, I have no drag on that pilot. That kind of converts, confirms in my own head that I'm leveled front to back left to right and I'm true to the center line of the quill on this particular seat and guide machine. From that point, again, this is a dry operation we're gonna cut. I'm gonna do it cut in a counter, or excuse me, a clockwise motion. I've got that set up, come right in here. As Soon as I make contact, right there, I'm gonna go ahead and lock that quill down, okay? Then I can set my seat ring depth here Say it's going to be a quarter inch thick. Set that to quarter inch. And I would confirm that with my calipers. Actually, I would confirm it with the actual seat ring set up in there to set that depth. Once that happens, I can release, release the quill lock and I'm machining. Nice dry chips coming through here. Getting close to my, my final depth. And I've gotten all the way down there. Double check it again. Nope, I'll run out of travel at that particular point. Turn my machine off. Retract my tool. answer my phone i can measure my counter bore real quick and look at that i've got a 1 500 counter bore that i already cut here so i'm happy I, I was able to set the micrometer setting device accurately i used the dial indicator to check the radius of the cutter i didn't go oversized so i should have that proper crush fit on cast iron, which as we know is three to five thousandths, and on aluminum, it's seven to nine thousandths. So keep in mind, a lot of the valve seat manufacturers build that crush into the valve seat itself. So uh, be sure that uh, you're aware of what that diameter is by measuring, don't guess, and uh, also the depth measure, don't guess, and then you'll have a complete precision counterboard to accept that new valve seat ring based on center line of the valve guide to place where that new seat ring should be then you've got the option at that point to either grind those multiple angles on that uh, valve seat or go ahead and use your 3d fast cut from your friends here at goods and tools and supplies to perform machining simultaneously all three angles at one time so lots going on with the dwa 300 it is a must tool in today's world because you've got your your metric sizes to deal with out there you've got your diesel applications and those seats have been available in 10 20 and 30 thousandths over for for quite some time and and the fixed cutters there's nothing wrong with the fixed cutter as long as it happens to be conveniently the correct size but Keep in mind that adjustable counterbore cutters are the way to go with today's uh, late model applications, aluminum and cast iron. And uh, this will get the job done accurately, not once in a while, but each and every time. So if you have questions, give us a call at 1-800-533-8010 or better yet, catch us on the web at goodson.com. Want to say thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.